Welcome to another lesson. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about impulse. So we're going to learn what is impulse. Now, impulse depends on the understanding of the concept of momentum. If you haven't seen the lesson on momentum or you haven't studied momentum yet, before you continue exploring this lesson, make sure that you study the previous lesson that we have published, which is targeting momentum. Now, impulse, in a very simplistic way, is the change in momentum. This is basically the definition of impulse. It's the change in momentum. And from the previous lesson, we said momentum, given the letter P, equals to the mass multiplied by the velocity. This is the formula to calculate momentum. So when we say the change in momentum, it means we're considering two different stages, final stage and an initial stage. What does that mean? Let's go back to the example of the car. If I have a car which is moving with velocity initial could be whatever number it is it has the same mass m now the car is moving in this direction and for some reason something happens and the car slows down or speeds up and this is the final state of the car this is the mass and this is the final velocity of the car so here at this point we do have the initial stage initial stage and here we have the final stage we go from one point to the other in the initial stage we have the same mass because the same car which is m and we have an initial velocity vi so obviously we can calculate momentum for the initial stage using the formula p initial in this case the mass multiplied by the initial velocity. This will give me the momentum for the initial stage of the car. Now, as the car go, goes, goes for the final stage, we're going to have obviously the same mass. However, the velocity has changed for a different velocity. And for that current stage, P final equals to the mass multiplied by V final. So we do have in, we do, we do have in this case the change in momentum. And as we have established, impulse equals to the change in momentum. Impulse equals to delta P. Now, delta, you're going to encounter this term quite a lot. It means the change in something. So delta P, it means my final minus the initial so we have the final momentum minus the initial momentum and you can calculate them separately so you can calculate the final momentum by itself and you can calculate the initial momentum by itself and then you are able to find the difference to help you get the impulse impulse equals to p final minus p initial which also means your mass multiplied by v final minus the mass multiplied by the v initial this is the simplistic representation for the impulse and how can we calculate the impulse so but if we examine it a bit further when we are taking a look at the impulse so what does the word impulse mean Think about it this way, if you are, if you have a friend running towards you, or if you are driving a car, and in both examples, there's a specific mass moving with a specific velocity, and then what you need to do is, you need to stop that mass, correct? You're going to stop it. You're going to try to change its momentum, and in order to do so, you need a force, correct? So if you have... your friend with a specific mass and a specific velocity 
he's running towards you and you're trying to stop your friend to resist his movement, his motion, you're going to apply a force. This force will be applied in fraction of a time. Fraction of time. In seconds, right? That fraction of a second will just simply apply that force and you push your friend. Then you're going to try to change his movement, try to change his momentum. So impulse could be related to that force. How can we do that? Impulse also means that force multiplied by the time it took to apply that force, which also means the change in momentum. So this is an expanded representation for the impulse. This is an expanded representation for the impulse, where we can just simply say your impulse force multiplied by time, which equals to your change in momentum. This is my impulse. This is a generic formula that will help you calculate impulse at whatever case it is. Whether you do have the force and the time taken to apply that force, you multiply them together, you're able to calculate the impulse, or you have the mass and the velocity, final velocity, and the mass and the initial velocity, you, are, you can use them to find the difference of the momentum, and you can still calculate the impulse as well. Now, the units for impulse, the units for impulse is in Newton dot second. Why? Because it's also represented with, with a force, where we know that force is measured in newtons and time is in seconds. Correct? In Newton multiplied by seconds. So this is the unit of impulse, Newton second. Okay, let's have an example. Let's have an example. Now, in this current example, we're going to consider a bowling ball rolling with Two meters per second it slows down to one meter per second as it hits a wall. find the impulse. So let's represent this problem. So we have a bowling ball and it's rolling and it hits a wall. The bowling ball is rolling with two meters per second. Now let's consider the mass of the bowling ball to be 10 kilograms. Okay, let's add that to the problem. Find the impulse. Consider the mass of the ball to be 10 kilograms. And the ball is rolling towards the wall and it hits the wall. And once it hits the wall, the velocity becomes one meter per second, correct? So obviously guys, whenever you have an impact, the wall is going to be pushing the ball with a force. Makes sense, right? So the question says, calculate the impulse. So what is given to me? I have the mass, which is 10 kilograms. These are the steps that we follow. Always write down what is known to you. 
Now, my initial velocity, this is stage number one, initial. This is the final stage, final, F. Initial velocity is two meters per second. My final velocity equals to one meter per second. Now, you do have the velocity, you do have the mass. What does the question require you to find? What does it ask you to find? Find the impulse. So how can I calculate the impulse? We call the formula. Impulse equals to the change in momentum. Now, I don't have a force given to me. I don't have the time taken for the force to act. So I cannot use that part of the equation, if you remember, which is right here. Force multiplied by time. Force multiplied by time. I cannot use that part. So I have to find an alternative. I can use this part right here because impulse is basically a representation of either one of them if you have the force multiplied by the time or if you have the change in momentum both of them can be used to help you find the force to help you find the impulse and in turn find the force as we're going to be seeing right now so impulse equals the change in momentum which equals to mass multiplied by v final minus the mass multiplied by v initial okay now Plug in the numbers, I have 10 multiplied by 2, actually it's 1, yes, for the final, minus 10 multiplied by 2, where the V initial equals to 10 minus 20, equals to negative 10 in newtons per second. Negative 10 in newtons per second. Why is this the case? Why is this the negative value? Obviously, because of this force right here. Because the impulse is acting in the opposite direction of my movement or my motion. My, my, my bowling ball started with 2 meters per second. It hit a wall and it transformed to 2 meters per second, slowed down to 1 meter per second. Because of a force which is acting in the opposite direction. This force is creating the impulse. It's creating the impulse, which is... 10 newtons per second. Now the second part. Now the second part. Calculate, let's say. The force. Exerted by the wall. If. It takes two seconds to reach the final velocity. So the second part, let's say, let's call this part A, and this is part B. So we are able to calculate the impulse because of the change in momentum. Now the question asks us, it says, can you calculate this force given that this force is acting for two seconds? It means what we went from two meters per second to one meter per second because of a force which was acting for two seconds that caused this transformation. Yes, we can. Again, we can go for the formula of the impulse which equals to the force multiplied by the time, correct? Now we're using the other part, guys. We've used this part to calculate the impulse. Now we're using this part to calculate the force because we have established what is the impulse. Now, all of them, they are interlinked. We can see the connection between all of them. So we've calculated the impulse from the previous part through momentum. Now let's take this number negative 10 equals to the force we're trying to find multiplied for, for by the duration for which the force is acting which is two seconds now basic math take two to the other side your force equals to negative 10 divided by 2 which equals to negative 5 newtons so if I'm going to explain this verbally, it means as the ball goes with 2 meters per second towards the wall and it hits the wall to slow down to 1 meter per second, 
the wall is exerting a force of 5 newtons in the opposite direction to slow down the ball for a period of 2 seconds. So it, in, in other words as well, it takes us 2 seconds of applying 5 newtons to slow the ball from 2 meters per second to 1 meter per second. So this is basically an example of impulse. How can you calculate impulse using the change in momentum? At the same time, you can relate the impulse with the force because it's a representation of both force acting over a period of time and the change in momentum as a result of that force, which is represented by this formula right here which you should know by heart, it will help you solve problems related to momentum and to impulse. So to wrap this up, impulse is basically the change in momentum or the force acting in a specific period of time, multiplied together, force multiplied by time, or the change in momentum where you have a final stage and an initial stage. And the difference between both of these momentums at these different stages will help you calculate the impulse which is the change in momentum or the force applied in a specific period of time in order to change the velocity of a moving mass from one stage to the other. Well, thank you for watching the video and I truly hope that you found the lesson beneficial. If you did, feel free to subscribe and smash that like button and join our community. Also keep an eye on the course description below because every now and then we'll be shooting some coupons and premium access to courses on our Elite Academy. I'll see you in the next class.